Hi guys. When the abdominal layer descends down at the level of L4, it bifurcates. And then there is renaming. The name, new name is given. As my friend Pradeep said, thank you Pradeep. He does not want to be in the video, but I tell you, he is a genius man. And thank you very much. Because it is renamed to common iliac artery. Now the common iliac will again divide into internal and external iliac. One of the very important and easy to remember things that you could do is internal iliac will go and supply the inguinal region, the pelvic region and the external iliac will go down and supply, terminate as femoral artery and supply the lower limb. So when we talk about the external iliac artery that is the supply of the abdominal wall or we say the deep circumflex artery. Deep circumflex, why circumflex? Because the external iliac will go into the deep abdominal muscles. What are the deep abdominal muscles? In the lower region of the abdomen where the, there's oblique, internal oblique down to that, lower to internal oblique, there is a supply of deep circumflex artery and thus is a branch of external iliac artery second branch inferior epigastric artery now we have seen that superior epigastric artery comes from internal thyroid artery yes no internal thoracic artery yes superior epigastric comes from internal thoracic artery which is in the chest region but as we, as we descend down from the abdominal aorta still we need to supply the inferior region of the gastric inferior gastric region so there would be inferior epigastric artery right for the deep part we have deep circumflex artery inferior epigastric artery will supply that and there's the third part he does not want to be in the video my friend Pradeep is helping me for this thank you very much the third part continues to femoral artery so when we start to talk about the internal iliac artery right then we must consider that it is supply of pelvic reason or we can call inguinal reason so what is how to remember it how to make difficult things easy the first artery coming off of internal iliac artery in the front part is the obturator artery now the obturator artery will supply everything everything in the region of obturator muscle by anterior and posterior divisions it has two branches right so in the anterior part in the front part of the internal iliac artery first is obturator obturator artery will divide as i have said uh, in the front there, there would be two subdivisions one artery going in the front one in the back and it supply everything near the obturator region the muscles obturator internus and externus obviously in the anterior trunk of uh, internal iliac artery as we have talked before there is obturator artery but there are also other arteries like umbilical artery there is vesicular artery now the umbilical artery is in the fetal life but in adult life it becomes it supplies the vesicle vesicle is the bladder anatomical name for bladder urinary bladder to be exact and we also have rectal artery right because middle rectal artery the floor of the rectum would need some blood supply and it would be supplied by the anterior the front trunk of the internal iliac artery right the another two important branches that we have talked about are the inferior rectal branch coming off of anterior trunk of internal pudendal artery or let's say pudendal artery itself then uh, it is still in the internal iliac artery right in the front of the iliac artery and we have one more very important artery 
which is inferior gluteal artery right so it will supply the gluteus maxima the biggest muscle of the uh, groin region right pelvic region in the posterior trunk or the trunk of the internal iliac artery where there is bone what is in the back part or let's say the posterior part of the external genitalia in the posterior part there are bones iliac bones which is the pelvic girdle right so there is for the inter internal iliac artery the first supply is to the iliolumbar supply or let's say the it supplies the bones and the muscles which would support the framework of the external genitalia what is the what are the muscles that are supporting the framework of external genitalia very very easy transversus abdominis quadratus lumborum psoas muscles these are the muscles which will support the structure of the second part which which is in the bones is the sacrum bone right so in the lateral part of the sacrum bone there is an artery called lateral sacral artery very easy so the lateral sacral artery will supply everything So the lateral sacral artery will supply everything from the skin of the sacral region to liver teranae muscles, the, all of the muscles which are in the floor, floor of the uh, external genitalia, they will supply that and it's very important because if it is hurt, it is also very uh, surgically relevant in cases of herniation. It's coccygeus muscle, like levator ani. These muscles are supplied by lateral sacral artery. Also, the skin part. In the posterior trunk of the internal iliac artery, there is one more artery which we call superior gluteal artery. Now, this artery, which will supply supply the big muscles of the gluteus region, which is the, the region in the back of the sacrum, or let's say external genitalia. So this would be also the part of uh, posterior trunk of internal iliac artery. 